We turn for our New Testament lesson to Paul's letter to the Colossians, the very beginning verses, and it opens with the typical greeting that many of Paul's letters uses. So listen again now for the word of God. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae. I want to make one comment about the word saints here. This is referring to all the members of the Christian community, uh, not the way we sometimes think about saints in the Roman Catholic Church that are very special, have to be elected and whatever. When Paul says saints, he's talking about everyone in the community. Uh, Grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of truth, the gospel that has come to you, just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. He's complimenting them, he's congratulating them, encouraging them. This you learned from Epaphras, our our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and the word dunamis is used here, emphasizing strength and power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience. Uh, That means long-tempered, being being long-tempered, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have you ever noticed that our world seems to be evenly divided between people who expect the best and people who expect the worst? We call them glass half full or glass half empty type people. Do you know which kind you are? Uh, Maybe you're a glass completely empty type person or you're a brimming to overflowing type person but you either expect the best or you expect the worst. If you don't know, those around you do uh, because they listen to what you say and they watch your actions. Uh, Sometimes it's not that hard to tell. For example, I heard about some children not long ago who were talking about marriage and 10-year-old Lynette says, nobody decides who they're gonna marry before they grow up. God decides it all way before, and you find out later who you're stuck with. Okay, that's kind of expecting the worst, isn't it? Or eight-year-old Lynette says, dates are for having fun and getting to know each other. Even boys are interesting if you listen long enough. Well, that's kind of expecting the worst too, but it's a little bit of both. What is Paul doing here in this text? I think he's doing both in his letter to the Colossians, especially in this passage that I just read. He is setting his people straight 
but he's also encouraging them. He's reminding them that they used to live in a life of sin, uh, doing a lot of sinful things, uh, but now, in contrast, they are living in the life of Christ, in the body of Christ. And so he's reminding, he's setting them straight, and he's, he's encouraging them all at the same time. And that's because they are living in Colossae. Now, Colossae is not an easy place to live. Colossae was kind of a whip whistle stop town somewhere in what is now modern Turkey, uh, a kind of cosmopolitan crossroads of Jewish and Greek thought, a little bit like California where ideas were blowing through lots of places and they took root here and there, Gnostic ideas, all a kind of new age thinking, astrological reading, lots of different things going on. And so the church is kind of dealing with a lot of things and Paul is trying to deal with them because the church is coming apart at the seams and he's trying to pull them back together and remind them who they are in Jesus Christ. It's kind of fascinating to see how he's doing this. Now, in so doing, is he expecting the best or is he expecting the worst? The truth is he's doing both if you read the whole letter. Now, he's expecting the worst, but not in the traditional negative way that some people expect the worst. Some people say, oh, it's going to be another bad day today, yesterday was, the day before. Uh, these are people who have kind of live life with a, a giant minus sign, and they, they see God as a giant frown in the sky who's out to get them, and nothing good is ever going to happen. It's just negative whining about everything. Now, people who live this way usually really aren't experiencing salvation, or what I've told you, the Greek word is soteria, which means a, a feeling of, of peace and oneness and hope. People who live this way are negative about everything. And that's not the kind of negative thinking that Paul is offering here when he expects the worst. Because people who are negative about everything and expect the worst in a negative way are forgetting to trust in God and to trust others and end up being totally cynical and suspicious and pessimistic about everything. Paul's way of expecting the worst is really a way about preparing for the worst, and it's actually theologically sound. Uh, it fits with Jesus' phrase, uh, be wise as serpents and harmless as dove. In other words, be street smart, because sin infects everyone. It is universal, it touches every single one of us, even those who are clergy. Every time we point a finger out talking about sinners, there are always three fingers pointing back. It touches every one of us, and it's radical, Radix meaning root in Latin. It means it goes to the very core of our being. And we're all basically out for ourselves. So it's smart to prepare for the worst. If you're in business and you're doing a business deal, you need to do due diligence to make sure you're not going to have the wool pulled over your eyes. So you need to be smart. Um, Paul talks about this. He talks about the sinfulness in many different letters. He talks about it a little bit later in this chapter in verse 21. He says, you who uh, were alienated uh, and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds. Reinhold Niebuhr, one of the great theologians in the United States, talked a lot about both corporate sin and individual sin. So this is just a fact and Paul is not ignoring it. He understands how important it is to be wary and to pay attention to what's going on in your situation. Uh, not every time, but sometimes when I walk down certain streets in New York City, I keep my eyes open and expect the worst, prepare for the worst, and that's not a negative, it's just being smart, street smart. Uh, it's, it's not bad to be wary uh, about things. Uh, I remember calling this woman for her birthday. By the way, that is the, my favorite part of my day, is birthday calls. People go, you got 2,700 of them? That's a lot of calls. I said, yeah, but it's the best part of my day because hardly anyone is grumpy on his or her birthday. 
people are generally pretty happy. And I deal with a lot of grumpy people otherwise, so it's really fun to do birthday calls. If, if you want to pick yourself up, do lots of birthday calls. Anyway, I was calling this woman one day, and uh, she, I was halfway through the birthday greeting, and she interrupted and said, oh, it's you, Dr. Carl. I thought it was that cemetery guy calling again to prearrange my funeral. Oh good, this is a lot better, a birthday call. See, it's not wrong to be wary and to prepare for the worst and sometimes even expect the worst. And so Paul does that. He's very wise about that, but he never does it negatively. Oh yeah, sure, he calls on his churches to get out of their sinful ways in lots of different letters, and, and even here, but, but here with the Colossians, he's congratulating them on the way they are living their lives, the way they are treating each other in their church community. Now, Paul is not naive about sin. As Henry Ward Beecher once wrote, I, I don't need John Calvin to tell me about total depravity. I have my congregation to show me that. Well, there is some truth to that. Paul was not naive about sin and about the way we treat each other sometimes. But here, he's expecting the best from them because they are one in Christ. That's the reason. He's basically saying it really doesn't matter how much we disagree on this or that because we do agree on this one thing, that Jesus Christ is Savior and Lord. That is something on which all of us agree. And when we do that, and when we really trust God, who really is in charge, we can expect the best. We can, as Paul says in another place, know that God is working all things together for good for those who love him. So Paul is actually preparing for the worst, yes, but he's expecting the best. It's not a matter of him being glass half full, glass empty. He just theologically is expecting the best because he trusts God to be in charge, to be uh, sovereign over all nature and history, the one who puts princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Paul believes that. And he congratulates the Colossians for understanding that salvation comes through Jesus Christ, and that God's will is unfolding in salvation throughout history, even in our time. He congratulates them on believing in the word of truth, which is the word of Jesus Christ, the gospel. Whatever they disagree on, they all agree on that one thing, and that is the starting point for them. He loves these people. He congratulates them. He thanks them encourages them, but thanks them for loving all the saints, knowing that real friendship in Christ means that we have the right to disagree, knowing that mutual respect and affection are not at stake. And he does this beautifully by encouraging them to live lives worthy of the gospel, to bear fruit in good works in the world, and to increase, not just grow, but literally to increase in their knowledge of God, which means share their knowledge and study the scripture and theology together and live together doing that. So Paul is not naive about preparing for the worst, but overall, I think, at the end of the day, Paul is expecting the best to happen for his church. I'll give you a quick example here at the end of the sermon. I uh, once heard the uh, former chair of the uh, affiliate, Texas affiliate of American Heart Association, talk about the fact that every public place in the state of Texas needed AEDs or automatic external defibrillators. And he insisted on it and pushed it through, and it, it happened. And not long after it happened, he was going through the electronic system, security system at the airport in Austin, Texas, and felt a pain in his heart, 
and dropped to the ground, and one of those AEDs that he insisted be put in every public place saved his life. At the hospital, the doctor said to him, uh, somebody besides just AEDs in the healthcare system is watching over you, buddy. He said, I know. Now, what saved his life? Why was his life saved? Because expecting the worst, he prepared for it, and then he expected the best. Trusting in God and trusting in his fellow man and woman. And that's what Paul did. And friends, that's what we need to do too. Paul was not naive about things that were going on. But at the end of the day, he expected the best because he knew he wasn't in charge and no one else in the church was. He knew that God was in charge. And that's the way we need to live our lives, to live our lives in the providence of Almighty God. To this God be all honor and blessing and glory and praise from this day forth and forevermore. God bless you all.